Another case that came in recently, a 17-month-old, where mother reported that the baby was beginning to scratch spots on the floor. And mother was quite concerned about what she was describing, not using the word perseveration, but it was a perseverative pattern where the baby was scratching a spot on the floor. The baby was beginning to tune out and, and look at the parents less. The baby had had some vocalizations uh, and had a few words, but was not using them anymore. And uh, there were more and more times where the mother felt that this little child was unconnected to her, although there were other times when the baby reached out and cuddled and was warmly related. On careful history, it became clear that this child had progressed nicely for the first year or so, had, uh, was very warm and loving as a four or five month old, had started some reciprocal two-way communication type patterns by eight months. Uh, but between about 12 months and 17 months, there had not been an increasing social complexity in the baby's pattern. In other words, there had not been the ability to take mommy's hand, walk into the refrigerator, and bang on the door and point to the food. There only remained some of these more simple peekaboo game type patterns that no one would normally see in an eight month old. Uh, also, what became clear was that this uh, child was not tuning in to more complex verbal commands. Uh, with an older child in the same family, mother had seen that, this ch that the older child was able to follow simple verbal requests uh, to get something, or there's the toy, uh, even though the other older child had not been talking at this early age, but had been more responsive. And this baby, she felt, wasn't understanding uh, what she was trying to communicate. And also, she felt that even her gestures were not understandable to her baby. So she was naturally quite concerned, and in her mind was already worried, is my baby uh, heading to, into autistic patterns or pervasive developmental disorder type patterns? And these descriptions of mother were all documented by observing the baby and mother interaction and by direct clinical work with the, with the baby as well. Now, but this was a baby who could still be very warm and very related and clearly connected to mother, but I could see intermittently these little islands of uh, greater aloofness and greater detachment and sometimes fixing on a spot on the wall and staring as well as these beginning perseverative behaviors. I should mention that a further evaluation, this baby had a clear auditory processing problem. Receptive language was delayed. There was a, some subtle motor tone and motor planning problems. And there was a mixture of hypo and hyperreactivity in different sensory modalities. So this was a baby who had high loading on the constitutional maturational uh, variation. Now, this pattern would not yet qualify as an autistic PDD type pattern because the baby was still re warmly related to mother, but this baby was moving into more of a pattern consistent with the autistic criteria. But we would call this a severe regulatory dysfunction of a mixed type that we have a category for. Now the helpful thing about calling it regulatory was that it helped us mobilize a rather quick effort to pull this baby back in. And we worked, we got an occupational therapist involved for the sensory reactivity and motor planning and processing, a speech pathologist, but most importantly, we worked with mother and father on how to pull this baby in and maintain the baby's attention, maintain the baby's interest and work around the processing problems and some of the motor tone problems that was leading the baby to feel overloaded and pull away. And within about two months, this baby was consistently take mommy's hand to search for a toy or take her you know, to the refrigerator. So we felt we had gotten this baby back on track with a very comprehensive, intensive effort rather quickly. The same case, if we had let it drift until this baby was two and a half or three, and the baby had come in much more withdrawn, more, meeting more of, the, more of the extreme criteria of autism and PDD, would have taken much longer, and maybe with less optimistic results to get back on, to get back on track. Now, this history of this case is characteristic of about 90% of the cases I've seen of older children who already can be called PDD autistic. And from a rather large number of older children who come in at age two and a half or three, on careful questioning, they all give this history of having done reasonably well in the first year and is slipping in the second year of life often. 